There we go. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. This is my second stream back in, like, a year and a half. But we're not going to talk about the year and a half. We're going to talk about the year and a half to come. Um, I just want to let you guys know that we have... I'm, I'm playing with some things behind the scenes. We may see some ads today. Now, the objective of that is not to show you ads. I don't want to show you ads. Fuck Twitch. Let me just put that out there. Fuck Twitch. And, um... But the reason why we're doing it is not so that I can show you ads and get money. It's... I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm going to appreciate the money if I get any money from it, which I won't. But, I'm going to put it out there. The reason why is because discoverability, right? I need to be able to be discovered, and I can't be discovered if people are clicking off the stream as quickly as they're clicking on the stream, which... 100% happens when you have pre-roll ads, so we've started the ad management program that just... They do this thing where they <laughs> they'll offer you an extra 20% of ad rev. I don't care about that. What I care is that it sets up an automatic schedule by which it runs my ads so that I never have pre-rolls. That's all I'm interested in. That's what I'm doing it for, so please keep that in mind whenever you're watching. If you see an ad, that's why you're seeing it. It's just so that people who have not seen anything of the stream before don't have to see an ad. One, one second. Oh, ain't that a bitch. Oh, I hate that. Nah. Anyway. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna try if I can to get the mic before I sneeze. Um, anyway, right. So if you see an ad, that's why it's purely to keep the stream ad free for new people coming in. I promise I'm gonna do my best not to put anything interesting during that time period. You should only see ads once every half an hour. It's probably not gonna be a big deal. Um, if you start seeing ads and I'm in the middle of saying something interesting, just give me a shout in, in, in the chat. I'm going to be trying to watch that real close. Just let me know. All right. So today we are flying from Jakarta to Singapore. To be clear, I just, I just want to be totally honest with you guys, okay? I have not flown this flight. I have never flown this route. Um, I did not pre-plan this route I, I planned this route about an hour and 15 minutes ago and that is wicked fast okay i i usually don't do anything that fast uh, i've usually got some idea what i'm doing for a couple of days before i fly it but this was kind of spur of the moment and frankly i wanted to get some sunlight look at this we have sunlight i never have sunlight when i get to fly but today, we have sunlight. Oh, also, look at that. Got a little bit of smoother frame rate uh, by reducing and eliminating the motion blur. Dear games developers, we don't like it. Most of us, anyway. There's a lot of people that it makes sick, and there's people like me who uh, I'm more interested in performance, and it is a massive performance hit. But I do understand why they do it. Um, they they weren't making this to be an airline sim. Um, I think there are a lot of people who use it that way, but that's not their niche audience. Anyway, we're going to get this thing started. So um, I'm just making sure that all my controls on my TCA throttle quadrant and side stick are all good. They seem to be. All right, so let's get started. One thing you can't see, I will not be able to see this side of the screen. Uh, in, in this area here, I cannot see what's here for the moment because this is where I have my checklist. Why? Because there's a lot of things going on on my other screen and I forgot just how much it takes to juggle this stream. Um, I'm also working on another integration that allows me to show you where I am. Bart, thank you so much for coming in. 
hitting us with that 45 months button 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 all the buttons all the buttons just for you button 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 the button 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 she even winds it down for you it's fantastic she's got amazing pacing um but yeah here's all the buttons for you Thank you for coming in and for maintaining that subscription for 45 years. I mean, that is, that is bananas. I can't even math that. You realize that I can't math that. Uh, it's three months short of what, four years? Yeah. Yeah, it's three months short of four years you've maintained a subscription here. Thank you so much for that vote of confidence, for that vote of support, and for being there, man. I appreciate it so much. It was great seeing you the other night. Uh, when you were playing some Valheim, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a thing if I can get that open. <laughs> Let's do a shout out for, cause, cause now there's like a, there's like a whole Twitch command that says, hey, go and, go and check this nerd out because he's, he's our type of nerd. All right. So let me get my screen set back up again. All right. So we are flying from Jakarta into Singapore today. Uh, I planned it very, very, very recently. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. We're gonna try and fly as close to the published routes as we can. Uh, we may go ahead and clear ourselves up to some altitudes a little early because that's what they do in the real world, but they usually have ATC doing it, not pilots doing it for themselves. I don't have any ATC yet. We are working on that. I have started flying on the VATSIM network and just trying to get myself used to the phraseology once I'm more comfortable and I don't wind up with my hands shaking while I'm trying to transmit. I will move that content onto here and we will be streaming on VATSIM. And I am going to twist this just a little bit. There we go. So VATSIM is an online ATC network for those of you who don't know. Uh, basically it has other people, real people playing Air traffic controllers, they are trained very similarly to how air traffic controllers are trained. Some of them actually are air traffic controllers. <clears throat> and they just manage network traffic. Um, you can actually see some of them on uh, Twitch from time to time or on YouTube also. Uh, I think they more often tend to be on YouTube because it's got an older demographic. Anyway, point is... We're gonna get this bitch flying because we are flying the fly-by-wire A320neo version 0.9.1 stable. And man, this, this thing has come a long way. I was involved with this program from its very, very early days. And it has come a long way since then. This is a completely different beast than it was when I first joined and started flying with it. Uh, basically when I started it was a glorified uh, default aircraft and it's not anymore. There's, there's, it's very definitely its own aircraft. Uh, so let's go down to our flight bag and we're going to start handling our loading. Let's import our route from Simbrief. We are going from Jakarta. I know this doesn't make much sense. This is the ICAO code for the international airport in Jakarta. And this is to Singapore. I know that doesn't make sense either, but that's the ICAO code. <clears throat> so our routing today is gonna be uh, from runway 25 left through the Delta, Delta 2 Charlie to Delta, Whiskey 12, to Papa Lima Bravo, then via Gulf 579 to Repov, and then we will be on the Repov 1 Alpha arrival to Singapore, landing runway 02 right, unless there are any major changes in the wind. So let's go ahead and get this thing started. Uh, obviously, we already have a ground power unit. I always forget to turn this on and bring that over first. We're going to go ahead and connect the jet bridge. And we're going to bring in the baggage truck and the fuel truck. And we're going to look at our fuel and we're going to say, hey, uh, Sembrief, how much fuel do we need? Oh, apparently about that much. 6,660 kilograms. That's 6.6 .6 tons. 
and we're going to load that in real time. It's going to take about four minutes, and we're going to get that started. That's how easy it is, folks. I used to have to punch this in through the mic. Dude, this is so much easier now. I can go over to payload. Hey, look, we got an empty aircraft. Look, we have an aircraft. You can actually see it. Well, how many people are we going to stuff in this tin can today? Well, we're going to stuff in about that many, and you can see all these dimmed out lights. Well, that tells you where a person needs to be putting their butt, and the fact that it's dim tells you that their butt is not there yet. Matter of fact, you can also see these little uh, arrows here along the top line. That is where all the luggage butts need to be. And it tells us, because it's not blue, that their butts are not there either. So we're going to go ahead and tell it to get started doing that in real time. It's going to take it quite a bit of time. They do load from back to front. And so you will be able to see these lights coming on as people are boarding the plane and getting butts in seats. But those butts are not in the seats yet. Three of them are, but you'll be able to see that rise However, we're going to go and do a few more things setting up the aircraft so that we can get this thing uh, flying just about as soon as they get those butts in those seats. So we're not going to really need much in the way of lighting today, but I am going to turn it up a little bit so that we can see a few things a little bit easier. Mostly just turning up display brightness because, uh, see at night I, I fly with these very, very dim because I want to preserve my night vision for, you know visioning the night but since i'm not worried about night vision right now we need it to be bright enough to be seen in broad daylight but i'm not going to be using any floodlights that would be stupid because it is the middle of the day the sun is the greatest of floodlights all right so our flaps are fully retracted our speed brakes are retracted Probe and window heat is on auto. Our APU bleed is not going to come on quite yet uh, because we're not going to start our APU until we're about ready to go. We don't want to waste any more gas than we need to. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, Southeast Asian um, air quality is low enough as it is, so let's not make it any worse. Uh, packs will be all off. Uh, there's these fault lights, but that just means that we don't have any air pressure. That's fine. Cross bleed is set to auto. Pack temps, we're going to turn up our temps just a hair, just a couple degrees. Generator 1 and 2 fault lights are on. External power uh, is going to remain on because we haven't turned on our APU. Electrical panel, all other lights off. And the ventilation panel, all lights off here and uh, here. So that's our preliminary pre-flight procedures complete other than our APU settings. Now we're going to go to our pre-flight and we need to turn on our deers. Now a lot of people you'll see will do this without uh, waiting. There's a test that goes on behind the scenes here and most people don't know about it because they just skip past turning these all on all at the same time. And as you're about to see this is going to pop on on battery because it's testing its battery condition. If this doesn't come on it means that the battery did not work. So we need to make sure that both power and the battery are working by turning these on and assuring that they have signal. It does take a few extra seconds per inertial reference unit, but that's what we deal with. It doesn't take all that long. It's about 30, 45 seconds. Oh no, we're, we're delayed 20, 35 seconds. Well, you know, people are still loading on the plane anyway. We can't fly. We're not leaving you at home. Okay, strobe lights are on. Wing lights, nav, and logo lights. I keep forgetting that you can't see my checklist. Um, I'm not going to turn seatbelt lights on quite yet. But I am going to turn on no smoking and arm the emergency lights. Landing elevation is set to auto. Pack flow, we're going to go high today because there is a lot of people on this plane. They're not here yet. Butts are not yet in seats, but they will be. Uh, I'm not going to turn on the fuel pumps because we aren't ready to fly quite yet. Engine 1 and 2 fire test will come at that time. Radios start on. It's my one complaint is that these are our two radios. They do start on, and I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, but then we get to go and do our MCDU. Now, I, I don't know exactly how to show you guys this. Um... So, I need to manipulate this thing using my MCDU. Unfortunately, you guys, 
I, so I've got so much going on that I need some data from here in order to fill it out. And that's really unfortunate because I can't show you both. Or rather, I can't show you this and me this. So, uh, there we go. Okay. I was about to say, it didn't look like it was connecting. Uh, so, just so you know, I actually have that McDo right here. It's a, it's a very, it, it is exactly what shows up on here. Um, so, when I can, I'm going to show you this. When I need data from the sim, I'm going to have to switch it over. And I apologize for that, but there's really nothing I can do about it. All right, so we're doing something called div sips. And uh, there's really nothing for us to do in data because uh, they automatically align the IRS. However, we do need to go to the init page. And we are going from Whiskey India 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 to Whiskey Sierra Sierra Sierra. And then our, I'm going to have to switch over here. Uh, our alternate is Whiskey India Papa Papa. Which is hilarious because we're actually flying very close to India. Nope, that's not what I meant to put. Nope, no sir. No, no sir. Well, that's fine. Whiskey India Papa Papa. And this is Indonesian Airlines 262. It's Alpha Whiskey Quebec. Where's my Quebec? There it is. Uh, 262. Our cost index today, which you're going to see right here, is five. Very lossy flight. Cruise flight level is going to be 380. That means we're going to be at 38,000 feet. I'm going to go ahead and load my wind, my climb wind, and my cruise wind. I'm not going to bother with descent because that'll be in an hour and a half, almost two hours. <clears throat> so now that I have... Um, data init flight plan diff sip so our flight plan today back over here I know this is a little bit of whiplash so we're going to be departing from whiskey India 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 Part you go away I did not ask for you nobody put a coin in your slot senor alright so we are departing from runway 25 left and we are going to be doing so via the Dalton to Charlie departure. Yep, yep, too far. Dalton to Charlie. And that's going to get us to Dolta. And then we're going to go via Whiskey 12. So, Airways via Whiskey 12. To Papa Lima Bravo. And then via Gulf 579. And we're heading to Ripoff. Romeo. Echo. Papa. Oscar Victor. Insert, because then we are going to go on the Ripoff 1 Alpha arrival. Oh, sorry, my eye's itching. We're going to go via the Repov 1 arrival to uh, Singapore 02 right. Look for ILS 0. RNAV. RNAV is fine. I can RNAV. 2 0. 0 2 center left. 2 0 right. Where is 0 2 right? 0 2 center. 0 2 left. Center left. Okay, I'm going to call an audible here and bring us into 0 2 left. No, I'll bring us to 0 2 center and then we'll slide transition over. So we're going to come in via the Repov 1 Alpha arrival. Uh, from what I understand, the reason why this is happening, the reason why it's not in the simulator, is because. Um, Runway 02 Alpha or 02 right 
was only just constructed, just brought online. Uh, it's so new that uh, Singapore doesn't have it in their AIP charts yet. So it's it's still act in in the actual real world. It's not in their charts list yet. Um, so that's very very new, from my understanding. Okay, in search. So we need to look at this discontinuity. Let's look at our flight plan. And we're gonna zoom out a little bit. Okay, so that's not a big deal. Um, and I think we may just go ahead and land on 02 center just because that's easier. So let's go ahead and tab us back. Oh yeah, that looks perfect. All right, so diff sips. We uh, can't really do a secondary flight plan. It's not yet modeled in this aircraft. You can see how that's all grayed out. Um, it's not yet added. They do plan to add it from my understanding. Uh, so now we need to do a nit B. The problem is, in order to do a nit B, we need all of these butts in these seats. So for the moment, we're kind of blocked. There's nothing we can do right now. And now you see why I laugh at people who can't wait for the Adiras to align. Because we're sitting here, we've already programmed our flight management computer. We've already... Um, by the way, if I'm like swallowing a lot, I just want y'all to know that it's because I was literally eating dinner as the stream was kicking off. Uh, <laughs> I had some Chipotle tonight. It's, it's pretty good, it's pretty decent. Um, but as a result, I am a little, uh, I'm a little salivary boy. So, uh, that's, that's why that is happening. And I apologize. <laughs> However, I do have some strawberry lemonade. We're going to wash it down a little bit. All right. So we are just basically watching butts get in seats we're much closer than we were a few minutes ago shouldn't take much longer we're just waiting for those first class uh folks to get in however i do notice that we have all of our payload is in so we're going to go ahead and dismiss the baggage truck and we can get rid of the fuel truck because those are already all filled up we're we're good as far as that's concerned And then let's go ahead and look at the outside. I still haven't gotten the hang of these flight, these uh, camera controls, so I apologize for that. It looks like we have a lot of uh, fog around here, which is not terribly surprising. So right over there is the runway we're going to be taking off on. You can't really see it all that well, but that's them's the brakes, folks. Dems to breaks. That's that's all you get. Um, like I said, I still haven't figured out this whole how to maneuver the cameras thing in Microsoft Flight Sim. I'm sure it makes sense to some people. I am not them people. Okay? So let's go ahead and pop back in the cockpit. We're not quite ready to plan our pushback yet. Go back in the cockpit and see where we're at with loading. We're just a couple people short. Need about seven people to sit their butts down in their seats. Looks like we got about uh, three, six, nine, twelve, thirteen empty seats on today's flight. Not a bad record. I mean, I've I've had the cock uh, the pardon me the the uh, I've had the cabin. That's the word. Completely full. That's only on a few, very few lights. Check here real quick, see if I can't see what's going on. All right, that sound, that sound is a very good sound, folks. That means that we are ready to go ahead and finish configuring our McDo. So I'm gonna pop this down here and I'm gonna pick up my McDo. And we're going to go to init, tab over to page B. And then we're going to just pull the zero fuel weight and zero fuel weight center of gravity out of the uh, electronic flight bag. 
And we're going to punch it in there. Welcome to Flight Deck. On behalf of myself, your captain, the first officer, and cabin crew, I'd like to take this time to welcome you aboard our flight. We're just wrapping up some paperwork up front here and waiting to see final numbers from the ground crew, then we'll be on our way. Flight attendants will be coming through the cabin shortly with a very important safety briefing. We do ask that you give them your full, undivided attention as they review the safety operations of this Airbus aircraft. We do appreciate your business having you aboard this flight. If there's anything we do to make your flight any more enjoyable, please don't hesitate to ask. Welcome aboard. And those are some uh, interesting... I used to have to do all of my briefings myself. I actually don't know the transition altitude. Um, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, because I don't even have access to their charts without going through the AIP. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat this... Wait, wait, wait. Let me make sure. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Might be wrong. I might be wrong. Trans level. There we go. Okay, so trans altitude is 11,000. Perfect. Thank you so much, Indonesia. All right. So we've got our flaps, our flex temp. Throttle reduction altitude is going to be 1530. Transition altitude is 11,000. V1, which is our point of no return, 133. If we hit 133 knots, we are taking off. I don't care what happens. At 133, we are taking off. There is not enough runway left to stop. Rotate is going to be 134. So one knot later, we can take off. And then our safe climb is going to be 138. All right. And that should have us ready to go. Beautiful. All right, so um, that's our McDo set. We're just about ready for pushback, so let's go ahead and jump back to our preliminary pre-flight procedures because we're about to get this bitch started. And in order to start this bitch, we have to start with the APU. We're going to dismiss the get jet bridge so they can close up that door. And then we're going to start the APU. So we start with the APU fire test right up here. It's going to make a loud noise. If it doesn't make a loud noise, we're in trouble. That is what I would call a loud noise. A very loud noise. So we are good to go. I'm going to turn on that master switch. We're going to look down here to see when it says that the flap is open. Flap is open means that the APU is, ble is breathing. And I'm bleeding because it keeps bringing up my weight and balance sheet. Please fuck off. All right, so APU starter is on. You'll be able to see the N percentage rising. You will also see the exhaust gas temperature rising very quickly. I'm not sure how real that timing is, but I know that they've worked really hard on this and they had a lot of real world Airbus pilots on this project. So I'm fairly sure it's gonna be accurate. I'm gonna go ahead and dial this down to a more useful altitude or uh, range and set it in a more useful mode. We're going to see this APU generator is going to turn green once the voltage starts rising. And that should happen anytime now. And that'll tell us that the generator is functioning. Voltage is good. The cycle rate is good. APU is available. So let's go ahead and turn off external power, or turn APU bleed on. Then external power can come off. All right, now to our pre-flight procedures. I can go ahead and turn on the seatbelt lights because, again, the words of the day is butts in seats. Fuel pumps can all come on. We are getting ready to pull this thing back and get going. Engine one and two fire test. This is going to be a loud noise. If there's no loud noise, we are in trouble. That is one loud noise. Let's see if we can have two loud noises. That is two loud noises. That means we are doing quite well. So let's go ahead and get prepared for pushback. Our altimeter needs to be set, so I can go ahead and go down here and look at the altimeter is QNH1008. So we need to set both that and our standby. Flight directors are on FCU. Speed and heading are in managed mode. Altitude we need to set to our ATC cleared. Our first waypoint is going to be at 3,000 feet. 
before we take a left hand turn. We need our anti-skid and nose wheel steering is on. Our switching panel is all norm. You will see that right down here. And we can go ahead and set our beacon lights on. Perfect. So now we can go ahead. Our doors and cross -check. Now we can go ahead and plan our pushback. Our pushback is going to be tail right. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and request that pushback. And as soon as it's connected and lifts our nose up in the air, we're going to be able to go ahead. And I think she's done. Okay. Well, that was the safety briefing. I think mine was funnier, but, uh, you know, it's all taste. Looks like we have a positive start on engine two. Let's go ahead and start engine number one. That is the bark of the PTU, the power transfer unit. This is the way that we provide pneumatic, or pardon me, not pneumatic, um, hydraulic power from the yellow. I want to say yellow. Uh, let me see, hydraulic, hydraulic, yes, from yellow over to blue and green, I think actually it's just green, um, without actually exposing the, um, hydraulic pressure of yellow to being, uh, vented if, in fact, the, uh, blue or green systems are compromised, like if there's a hole somewhere. Um, so what it basically does is the yellow is pumping all of this, you know, hydraulic fluid around and it spins a turbine that spins on the other side too. It's not electric or anything. It's just, it's a fin that it pushes against, which then the fin on the other side pushes the fluid in the next system over. That's, that's a nutshell of the power transfer unit. Okay, so we are available. That means we have a positive start engine one and two. Engine mode selector can go to normal. APU bleed can come off. Ground spoilers can be armed. Flaps set for takeoff. That's position one. Pitch trim we're not going to worry about because I don't have a way to calculate that anymore. Uh, engine and wing anti-ice we don't need. APU master can come off. And we need to double check that the doors are armed. Perfect. So we're ready for our tax pre-taxi procedures. We're gonna go ahead and turn our nose wheel lights to taxi. 
our parking brake. I'm gonna I'm gonna save that for a second. We're gonna go ahead and turn on our elapsed time. Flight control check. Full left. Full right. Full up. Full down. And then we're gonna look at. Pardon me. I've managed to twist my rudder pedals. Left and right rudder. And I've managed to, to punch in my brakes a couple times, but that's okay. We do need to check those brakes. Everything looks good. FMA should be on nav and climb. I'm not going to turn on the auto brakes quite yet because that would be stupid. Uh, it's just going to turn itself off like a thousand times. So uh, I'm going to real quick go into a sterile cockpit while we taxi because I don't know this airport. And so I'm going to use a progressive taxi in my charts. So this is going to show me where I am and where I'm going. So we are going to be taxiing via Sierra Charlie 3 to Sierra Papa 2. And my map is zooming and following me. Uh, to Sierra Papa 2 to Sierra 1. And then we'll line up on zero on uh, two five left. Follow me. Zoom can come back on. All right, we are sterile cockpit, so I apologize, but I cannot see chat at the moment. We'll be able to fix that here in a little bit. But for now, let's go ahead and take our parking brake off. And I'm going to navigate via uh, Sim Toolkit Pro. Very useful program. Very very useful. It is because of Sim Toolkit Pro that you can type exclamation point route right now and you can follow along with me. If you so choose. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and follow Sierra Charlie 3. And I think my rudder pedals are twisted again. That's all right. I'm gonna slow us down just a tad while I look up and get the purser called. So this is going to be Sierra, Sierra Papa 1. We're gonna need Sierra Papa 2. Go ahead and slow us down so we can make the turn onto Sierra Papa 2 more comfortably for our passengers. Perfect. Okay, we are now on Sierra Papa 2. Taxiing towards, what was it, Echo 1? Technically, we could take the runway anytime now. I think we've got plenty of runway. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and line up at the entrance to the runway. That's just how I do here. Let's give it a little gas. We're not trying to do a Delta taxi, but, you know, would like to get there this century. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the predictive wind shear system. Let's get our transponder. Flight test, please prepare for takeoff. Nope, 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 right up here. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and light this bitch up because we are just about there. Normally we'd wait just a little longer to light up, but 
I want to go ahead and get out of here just as soon as humanly possible. So as we are taking the runway, this is where I can go ahead and that is not the correct window. I need to look at this one. Auto brake set to max. Flex set. Eighty knots. One hundred. B one. Rotate. Positive rate. Gear up. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the autopilot. Brown spoilers can be disarmed. Nose wheel light and runway turnoff light can come off. Rust reduction. Engine mode is at normal. Looks like we are easily going to get 3,000 feet. We will look real quick at our departure to Delta. We're going to be at flight level 110 as soon as we possibly can. <clears throat> We're going to go ahead and fly to and uh, clear ourselves to flight level 110. We need to be there by SICAD, which you'll see right out here. It's hard for me to see. SICAD is right here. Love you. Should be SICAD Delta. might have something a little different. Okay, speed checked, flaps clean. Our transition altitude is 1,000 feet, so we will set our standard barometric pressure at that point. Are we in TA only? I definitely flicked that over to TARA. I apologize if you hear the sound, the, the dulcet tones of my phone going bananas. That is a thing that happens when I forget to tell it to shut the hell up. And no, 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 you can sh stop. Quiet. Quiet everything, everything quiet. There we go. Okay, we should have no more interruptions from Cricket Wireless. I'm not sponsored by Cricket Wireless, but uh, I do appreciate their products. They, they actually went pretty well. Um, all right, so ladies and gentlemen, we are in the air. Uh, there are predictions. Okay, so the way that works is you're in a type exclamation point predict. That number needs to be, that, that exclamation point predict needs to be followed by a negative number. Now, to be clear, this is going to be my landing rate. My landing rate will be 
probably anywhere between about negative 120. I, I've seen people go as low as like 60. And anywhere as low as, any, anywhere as high as like negative 600. I think the worst I ever got was negative 1200 and that's because my engines went out and I crashed. So barring a crash, uh, we should not see anything quite that bad. We're gonna go ahead, well, we're gonna wait until we hit 11,000. So yeah, uh, if you want to participate, all you gotta do is hit exclamation point predict and then a number, I think my last flight was something like negative 220 or something like that. Um, actually, I can look at LRM and I can tell you what that was. My last landing, pardon me, was 351. That was a really hard landing. Before that was negative 208. A uh, couple of landings ago was 132. So I'm all over the place. I apologize, that's going to make it hard for you to go ahead and predict me, but comes the brakes, that's what makes it hard, you know what I'm saying? Alright, so uh, we have to set our standard barometric pressure. That is done. Once we clear this waypoint, I'm going to go ahead and clear us up to 38,000. We don't want to waste any more fuel than we have to. All right, crossing Savia. Let's go ahead and bring her up. It's going to take us a minute to start climbing anyway. Fantastic, ladies and gentlemen, we are on our way. Landing lights are off. And I'm going to go ahead and clear you guys to move about the cabin. So that is takeoff procedures in the A320 and X. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed my TED Talk that had absolutely nothing to do with me knowing anything about the aircraft. I've just been flying it a lot because I really like this plane and it's cheap. Uh, by cheap, I mean it is free. It is absolutely 100% free. I can go ahead and show you... Nope, that is not what I wanted. That's checklists. This is... Interior lighting presets. This is new. Oh, hello. Oh, dear. You, you are beautiful, aren't you? Oh, that is, that is delicious. You can set up lighting presets for each time of day. Ah. Ah. I learn something new about this aircraft every goddamn day. It is so beautiful. I love this thing. Uh, however, what I'm not seeing is maps, which is fine. Honestly, it, it is fine. Um... You wouldn't really have a map in flight. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and zoom this out a little bit. So we're coming up to nip it. Nip it. So yeah, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to give me a shout. I'm happy to answer any questions that I possibly can. I am going to be trying to uh, stream a bit more. By a bit more, I mean at all. I don't know that I'm going to try to nail my old schedule. So, I know that technically speaking, so far, I'm doing a bang-up job of hitting my old schedule. Uh, timings are a little bit different and weird, but... In general, I'm following the days at the very least. And I'm I'm turned off camera, aren't I? Yeah, I'm turned off camera. Uh, so I am at the very least on the right days, but um, that's not something that I'm aiming for. It's not something I'm trying to do. 
Um, that's something that's just kind of happened accidentally, more or less. Um, this has all just been kind of spur of the moment. Not really a plan to come back to streaming, but I just wanted to try it out, see if my PC has the chops, because um, she's, she's a very thirsty baby. Okay, she, she sips a lot of power. Um, she doesn't have the strength that I was hoping. Um, so I've had to turn down some settings and reduce fidelity, that sort of thing. Um, I think I'm streaming in 30 FPS. That is intentional. Uh, let me be clear. Because the fact of the matter is, frame rates are all about when things change. Well... I mean, look at this. Unless I'm swinging the camera around, nothing is changing. Like there's there's a very slow, gradual creep of these these uh, clouds slipping under the dash. But other than that, there's nothing going on here, folks. You know, it, it's not that big a deal. So getting 30 FPS in Microsoft Flight Simulator with this kind of fidelity and with those clouds, look at the look at those clouds, chat. Look at those volumetric clouds. They are beautiful. I mean, just look at this cockpit, the lighting. Look at this lighting. But to have this kind of frame rate with this kind of, of quality? Got to lock my door. Any one of you could have come up here and uh, broke into the cockpit at any time. So, um, sorry, just had to do a couple quick uh, cruise checklist items. But, you know, there's nothing going on here, and it, it reduces the strain on my hardware. So that's the hope there, is that it, it provides less strain. I'm going to try and tilt this down a little bit, see if I can't get myself a little better in frame. Come on, self. No, no, no. You don't need to see my wall. You don't need to see my wall. There you go. Good job, rat. All right, looks like we're good. So, yeah, I don't want to overtax my PC to send you a bunch of frames that aren't updates. You know what I mean? Uh, the only time that really matters is right before takeoff, or right at takeoff and right after landing. Or strike that, reverse it right after takeoff and just before landing. That's really the only times that it matters. I apologize, I got something stuck in my throat. Anyway. Um, so I've dialed things down a little bit. I've um, had to make some compromises that I don't like. But that's, that's the cost of having this, you know, cheaper cut rate RAM... Uh, not having as much of it as I would like. It is expandable. I can expand it. I just don't have the cash. Um, I'm only pseudo somewhat gainfully employed. <laughs> um, it looks like we may have a, a, a uh, ad break coming up here in about five minutes. But I wouldn't worry about it too much, folks. Um, like I said, here at Cruise, not much goes on. Um, the plane will still be here when you get back. I promise. Probably. I don't think I could even get down to the ground in five minutes. I mean, well, the, the ad break will be about a minute and a half. And I'm fairly certain I could not crash the plane in a minute and a half from this altitude. Um... I'm pretty sure you'd have a couple minutes of descent, even unpowered, before uh, before I hit ground. So, well, in this case, water. I think this is going to be a beautiful descent. I need to. What's what's my top of descent? I still haven't hit my my cruise altitude, but what's my top of descent? Uh, let's see. 
Fredo. Come down to 6,000 at Reams. We can't really set everything up yet, but what we can do is use our descent calculator. We're going to be down to 6,000 feet when we're ready to go down there, but we're not yet at our target altitude. So once we're there, it'll tell us how, how, how early we need to... Actually, I can go ahead and just punch it in. Fuck it. Let's just punch it in. Hundred nautical miles. Okay, so we need a hundred nautical miles before reams. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you here what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna reload my McDo. And we're gonna go to progress as soon as it finishes loading for me. There you go. So Romeo Echo Mike Echo Sierra. So I've put that in, and when this distance says about 110 to 115 nautical miles, I'm going to go ahead and start my descent. That's the plan. Um, all right, just clearing some stuff off of here so that I can make sure that I have everything I need. Perfect. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go ahead and extend this range a bit. Quite a bit. Jesus. Okay. I mean, this is this is fairly common when we're going through international territory. I mean, there's a lot of land with not a lot there, so there's going to be a lot of time between VORs. Which is what these are. These waypoints are VORs, mostly. I'm sure there are a couple of them that are GPS, but I'd be willing to bet they're all VORs. All right. Let's see here. I want to see... Uh, I know where I can look. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Alright, thank you so much. If you're here, thank you so much. You don't have to say anything. I don't want to pressure you into um, speaking up if you're a lurker, if that's what makes you comfortable. I don't want to force you in. I just want to tell you that I appreciate you being here. Thank you. Really, thank you. Um, if you're a bot, fuck off. Nobody cares about bots. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and turn my auto brakes all the way down. Just glancing over my controls here. Everything looks good. Um, and the last thing I want to do is land with max auto brakes still set. That is, that is not something that I want. Um, so when we land... Let me look at some information here. Looks like we're going to have 13,000 feet of runway. We have loads of runway. We have all the runway. We could, we could, we could take all the runway ever and still have extra runway at the end. Um, so it looks like we're coming up on top of climb before too long. And it looks like we may be right on, on track for it. Fantastic. Gotta say, I love that. I love it when a, fl when a plan comes together like this, you know. Uh, I, I don't want to actually, like, play the clip because I don't want to get DMCA'd. But I do love it when I did not plan a goddamn thing for this. I, I just... I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to stream today. Well, what are you going to stream? Uh, I mean, I'm going to have to fly because I don't have any of my other overlays set up. Okay, okay. So you're going to fly. Where are you going to fly to? Oh. Well, I guess I could fly. You know what? I want to fly somewhere where there's sun. Where's their sun? I literally pulled up a daylight map of the, uh, of, of the world, and I just went... That's light. Okay, we're going to look at Southeast Asia. 
And then I just started looking at a website called Flight Connections where I can select a departure or I can select a uh, arrival and it will just show me all of the commercial flights that depart from that location or that arrive in that location. And I can just find one that's about the right duration because I like to sit somewhere between like an hour and 15 minutes to an hour and 45 because I, I like to stream somewhere in the ballpark of two to two and a half hours. And it does take me a little time to get the aircraft set up and shut down uh, especially when I'm trying to kind of a little bit showcase the fact that the uh, fly-by-wire Airbus A320neo has this this wonderful passenger status display. This is this is beautiful. And uh, guys at fly-by-wire, if you guys see this, if you guys are watching this, um, this is payware. I mean, to, to the people in my chat, I, I want to be clear, this is not payware, but this is payware level stuff. And the fact that you have something like this in a free project is absolutely incredible. Now, I'll tell you right now, if I was a tester, what I would do is I would punch zero in these right now and I would try to kick these passengers off at cruise altitude. And I wonder if that would work. I'm not going to do it while flying. Because I don't want to be accused of a war crime on Twitch. But it's something that I would do if I was testing the product because I have a feeling that I can absolutely kick all these people off. Um, I'm just hoping that it's not. Anyway, um, we're well in our envelopes. Um, the fact that you have the flight envelope is beautiful. I, I love this stuff, man. You guys you guys really knocked it out of the park with this. Having, having where the fuel is... And, and evenly balancing it. Man, this is stuff you didn't have to do. And, and adding your own pushback client. Man, that is that is just beautiful. I, I You guys did a lot of hard work on this. And I just want you to know that it's appreciated. Um, I know we're not paying for it. But having all of this in the EFB, like this, this is better than... I'm going to say it. Okay, I'm going to say it. Guys, I've never said anything like this in my entire career as a streamer or as a flight sim pilot. And I, I, I want you to be able to see my eyes if you can. I don't know. It, there's a lot of lights in here. Uh, there's a reason why I usually have my, my hat pulled way, way down. Um, I just want you guys to know. The CFB is better than Tolis. I said it. I said it, and I'm sorry, Tolis. I still love you. I still love you, but you need to abandon X plane. Um, that's what it is. I, I'm sorry. I said it. It's true. And now we can move on. You need. You need to get out of X plane. Um, I don't care if you do continue developing for X plane. Just you need to move on. Get out. Get. Get. You can keep developing for X-Plane. You just need to start with MFS. Because um, I'm going to tell you, uh, X-Plane is... X-Plane has some splaining to do. Okay? I am not happy with X-Plane. Austin? Okay. Apparently today is just the hot takes day. Um, there's not a lot going on in chat, so I'm, I'm getting the opportunity to say some some wild opinions and uh i'm i'm sorry if anybody involved in these projects is watching and you don't like this but here's the thing i don't talk about anything that i don't use i don't talk about anything that i don't love so if i'm talking about your project even if i'm telling you bad things about it i am saying it from a place of love it is because i want it to be good 
because good is better for everyone. Okay, I already own the Tolus 319. I are I, I would still if I had the disposable income I would still buy the Tolus A321, even though it'll only fly in X plane. I would still buy it, but you need to move to MFS, and that brings us to Austin. Austin at Laminar Studios. I'm going to try to be as positive and supportive as I can with this. But man, you are making it hard. Um, you need to listen. Okay? Um, I, I, I understand that you're some kind of a, you know plain savant you, you like you 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 did fantastic things i loved the system depth that was available in x plane 11 um you paid attention to things that mattered to me like being able to have a runway that wasn't flat x plane 11 had that hand over every other simulator that's why i bought it i'm gonna be honest that's that is if i had to pick just one reason why I bought X-Plane 11 over any other simulator, over FSX, over P3D, over literally any other simulator that you could get out there. The, the one reason why, the biggest reason why was runways being curved. Having them have deformations and elevation differences because that happens in the real world. And I want to be ready for it. I don't want to come into Narsarswek and come in and have it, you know, make the damn runway straight when it's really got like a 15 degree grade. I flew into Narsarswak in an A319 in X-Plane 11. If I would have done that in MFS, I would have landed fine. Because I was in X-Plane and it had those, those deflections, I was able... I say I was able like this was an accomplishment, but I was able to crash and went into the water because... I couldn't stop because the runway was running down away from me and I landed the wrong direction. I was supposed to come around from the bay and come in and go up it, which would make sense. But I'm an idiot and I was young and I came in from the canyon and the runway was running away from me. Okay? So. That was fantastic. You were listening to what people wanted. Okay? And there are some things that you were listening on. Like, you know, uh, making the weather look better. But, listen, man. Uh, for one, when you're talking to people on, on, your, on your YouTube channel, don't be condescending. Don't sit here for 20 minutes going, why Why is it that, I, I, I don't know why my airplane is going off to the left. Is there, is there a wind gust? Is there, what, what is happening? I, 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 I don't know. What could possibly be, I mean, I know those of you who've flown real airplanes, you know what I'm talking about. You, you know what's going on here and you're all rolling your eyes and you know what caused it but but for everyone else here which means you're taking a shot at sim pilots like me why is it that we're going off to the left well let me tell you something austin i knew what was causing it to go off to the left it was because of the rotation of the propeller the rotation of the propeller went one way which meant that you had torque on the entire body that meant that the whole thing was going to be going off to the left because your propeller is spinning to the right which means you're going to veer off course if you don't input deflection i don't need to look at the airflow models which looks beautiful i'm glad that you have them you just don't need to be an ass about presenting them and assume that people don't know what they're talking about don't know why this is happening let me be clear nobody's buying x-plane 12 to play as an armchair pilot i mean I, when i say armchair pilot i mean like there's simulator pilots like me where we're actually trying to simulate the systems and procedures 
And then there's armchair pilots that are really looking for a more arcadey experience where they don't really understand anything about aviation. They're just coming in, they want to fly a plane. Nobody's buying X-Plane 12 for that. Nobody bought X-Plane 11 for that. Nobody. You know why? Because who's going to buy X-Plane 11 for 60 bucks when it's years old when they can buy FSX and do it for 10 bucks? If they're just looking for an arcade experience, why would they do either of that when they can download DCS for free? Just buy an airplane. Or learn to speak Russian. That's what I did. I downloaded DPS, or DCS, and... Uh, Thank you so much for listening. Anyway, um, as I was trying to say, um, I downloaded DCS, and I did one of their free fly weekends. Flew the, um, I want to say the A-10. But uh, I downloaded it a little early and tried the Sukhoi 25. Couldn't get it off the ground because I don't speak Russian. So I got stuck with the P-51 Mustang. But here's the thing. You can fly them. And I'll tell you this, they're a lot more fun to fly than airliners and Cessnas. Even the Cirrus Vision is not as fun to fly as an A-10 Warthog or an, you know, an F-14 Tomcat, F-A-18 Super Hornet. Austin, nobody's buying your products for an arcade experience. We all know a thing or two about aviation. We're here because we're Av Geeks. That's why we buy X Plane over FSX, over DCS, over. I mean, don't get me wrong, the system's depth in, in DCS is fantastic. I'm not making fun of them for being free. I'm just saying they're easy. They're easy, they're free, they're cheap. If you're just looking for an arcadey flying experience, if you just want to sit down, hit the P button, and go. Man, X-Plane's not for you. You feel me? So, don't come here on your, on your podcast that nobody's listening to and, and sit there and talk to us like we're all idiots and don't know that a propeller spinning in one direction is good. This is why helicopters have a tail rotor. It's because their prop only spins one direction. That's why the Chinook doesn't have a tail rotor. Because it has two props spinning in opposite directions. This is why the King Air doesn't need that much... Uh, the, the, the Beechcraft King Air, the, the, the 350, doesn't need that because it's got two motors. And they're spinning in opposite directions. Which means that there's a net zero torque on the airframe. I mean, sort of. There's Anyway, the point is... We understand that kinetics. We understand how air, how how. We understand how it works. Like we're here because we're aviation geeks. So don't talk down to us, and you need to listen. Like smooth your weather for fuck's sake, man. I I can't tell you how many times I was flying. You can go and look at any of my vods. You can look at any of my. Uh, uploads to YouTube or Rumble. Yes, I have a few uploads on Rumble. Um, you can go look at any of them and any of the X-Plane videos. Every time I'm on descent, you can see the, the, the plane's going fine, then all of a sudden, because I just hit like a shear layer between where you loaded one weather and another, or I hit a wall where you loaded... Because you, you load new weather every, what, 15 minutes? I think it, I think it's a default is like 15 minutes. You can set it. But the point is that you load new weather. And when you do, you just... It's the new weather. Listen, I appreciate you trying to be up to the moment with the weather. But weather doesn't do this very often. 
Little 2356 high. <laughs> you don't know anything about aviation. That's okay. That's true, but I'll bet you didn't buy X Plane 11 or 12, did you? So, I, I mean, what I'm talking about here is the developer, um, the owner of Laminar Studios, the one that's developing um, X Plane 11 and 12. It was my favorite simulator. X Plane 11 was my favorite simulator of the last generation. It's, it was my favorite simulator when this simulator, Microsoft Flight uh, Simulator 2020, came out for about a year. And now I've changed my mind because as the simulator has aged, Microsoft Flight Simulator has baked itself. It's gotten a lot better, a lot stronger. It's, it, it's ironed out a lot of the bugs. My my plane isn't trying to torpedo itself into the ground. Um, you know, it can actually follow a navigation line. I'm not having to manually fly it dead reckoning or VOR to VOR. Uh, I can just set up my flight computer and I'm good. I still monitor it to make sure that we're not going off course or anything, of course, but um, I don't have to monitor it as much. But, you know, the, the, the owner of this other simulator that I loved, that was fantastic. This, this, the owner of this other simulator just decided, you know what? I'm going to put out a video to showcase that I have all these diagnostic views where you can see all of the, the flows of wind and the, the center of mass and gravity and the... The, the current forces that are at play and there's all these different overlays that shows how it's all how all the thrust is going how all the the weight and balance is how the wind is flowing um even even wind temperature air temperature it's a fantastic thing it's a fantastic system but he's talking to us like we're assholes or like he's an asshole like most people who are buying anybody I mean, let's be clear. Anybody who can interpret that that graphic of all the airflow going over the airframe, anybody who can understand that graphic knows enough about aviation to know why that airplane is listing to the left when you advance the throttle. It's because, again, that prop is spinning in one direction, which means it's flinging the, 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 the plane off into the left. I mean, it, to, to the left, because you guys are on... It's flipped. Anyway, off to the left. Damn it, I did it again. To the left. Right, there we go. There we go. There's there's the motion. To the left. Cool. Um, so yeah, it's kicking the, the plane off to the off to the left and so that's what's what's causing it. We all knew that. Anybody that was watching that video knew that. Anybody who could figure out the things that he's telling us to look at to figure out why it's going off to the left, they would have known that to begin with. He, you know, either pick a better example or just show us how to look at it. You don't need to set up this this condescending attitude because you developed the simulator. And I feel like that's just... It's the way that he is. He doesn't listen to what people are looking for. You know, with X-Plane 11, we told him that one of our focuses was weather. Weather was important. And the weather system in X Plane 11 was garbage. You know, it's still garbage in X Plane 12. It's better, but he focused a lot on how things look. And I understand why he did that. It's because, I mean, he's up against MFS. Look at this. This looks fantastic. It's not perfect, but it looks goddamn beautiful compared to X Plane 11. I mean, I can look out the window. And I don't see Colgate toothpaste. If you look at my old videos in uh, X-Plane, the ground looked like I was looking at it through, like, wiped-on Colgate toothpaste. It's terrible. Um, I can't tell you how many hours I spent trying to Google how to get rid of that blue haze. I mean, there is a bit of blue haze. Like, even here, you can see there's a bit of blue haze, but that still looks green. 
It's not like it's lost in a sea of blue haze. Which is what happened in X-Plane. I need to make sure my mic do stays on now. Because we are... If I can get my mic do to reload... We're about 195 miles away from Reims. And we need to start descending at about 110, so we're about 80 miles away, 80 nautical miles away from descent. I also need to watch for when it's going to scream at me to input my destination data. And let me tell you, I can see this McDo sitting over here on top of my computer a lot better than I can this one here in the plane. And I don't have to be sitting there staring at the floorboard <laughs> for you guys. Um, but yeah, apparently this just turned into the real speak hour where, um, I'm taking shots at some of the developers. I mean, again, I just want to be clear. The fact that I'm taking these shots doesn't mean that I don't like the products. If I didn't like the t products, I wouldn't be talking about them at all. I just want to put that out there. I would not be talking about them at all. If I didn't like the product, if I didn't want it to work. And even though Microsoft Flight 2020 has become my favorite modern simulator, including more than X-Plane 12, even though it has become my favorite, I still want X-Plane to be better. I still want X-Plane to develop itself to a point where it can reasonably compete because competition is good for everyone. Because... If Microsoft can get away with being lazy about MFS, they're going to. They're going to be lazy. They're going to develop lazy. And there are clouds at 38,000 feet. Holy cannolis, man. This is unexpected. Those are some really high clouds. Uh, mm, there's not a lot of it, but I'm going to go ahead and turn on my anti-ice anyway. Until we come down a bit. I don't know if that's procedure or not. Um, I've never actually encountered this. I mean, I'm sure it happens. I just don't know whether or not they use anti-ice for, for this. I don't know if we're too high and won't need it or what. But yeah, when when I say we, we all know a bit about aviation and we don't need to be told that, I, I didn't mean like everybody watching. I meant all of us that were watching Austin do his podcast where he's talking about these things like we're all morons. Um, so yeah. I mean, I think that uh, Austin has a bit of an ego. And I think that if he were to get rid of that ego, then the product that he came up with for X-Plane 12 would have been better. And I think that his continued development of X-Plane 12 into the next few years would be phenomenal. Because he absolutely has the chops. The problem is he just... He's a dreamer. He does what he wants. What he has a passion for. Which, more power to him. But it's the reason why I'm not buying a simulator. It's the reason why I'm sitting here flying, X, uh, flying MFS 2020. When I first criticized this simulator up one side and down the other for all of its negative... For all of its failures, for all of its faults. Now, I'm not saying this doesn't have faults. The other day, I flew into... I want to say Memphis. And... The terminal was on the taxiway. Like it, was my, it was my first flight on VATSIM, and I had to disconnect... Because I had a terminal in front of me on the taxiway. And I didn't know how to resolve that 
while remaining on VATSIM, so I disconnect it. And I, and I think that is actually how you resolve the issue on VATSIM, is you disconnect. But that's a problem. I mean, isn't this all supposed to be satellite data? You know where the terminal is. You just got it wrong. Um, apparently Miramar was incorrectly modeled. I haven't been there, but apparently it was incorrectly modeled, which is bad because they, around the release of Top Gun, they, uh, around the release of Top Gun, they released an expansion pack that was entirely based in Miramar. I, I don't know about you guys, but that sounds like a problem to me. I mean, if you're going to, to base an entire content pack release on a region of the world, a very small region, one airport, one airfield, and you can't get that one airfield right? Like, that, that should have been on the list of things that you check before you even start working on the content. Before you start programming this, how you do rollovers and, you know, flying uh, the, the, the right airplane and all this. Before you get to all that, before you get to what is it called, it should be, hey, this is going to be a Miramar. Do we have Miramar? Is Miramar correct? Check the satellite. Is it correct? Because if it's not, nothing else matters. None of the rest of the content matters. And there's somebody in the chat right now. I, I know you're there. I don't want to. I don't want to call you out, but I know you're there, and I, I hear you. Uh, this this was actually their argument, and it's a good one. It's a good one. That is a major fault. But you compare that to X Plane Eleven, where there was literally runways where there was a one foot tall jump in elevation. I'm I'm sorry, what? I'm I'm pretty sure there's no airport in the world that has an that has a runway with a step in it. I, I'm sorry. Um planes don't have sneakers. They can't walk upstairs. They don't run down the runway, they fly down the runway. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and enter some destination data. Um, we've already programmed our arrival, so we're gonna go ahead and go to our overview here, because we need to look at our METAR. So we're gonna go to performance, and we're gonna go down to our approach. So QNH there is going to be uh, 1009. Our temperature is going to be uh, 28. Nice and warm. That's what I like. Winds are going to be 360 at 9 knots. Uh, let's see. I'm going to look at the arrival chart. See if I can't find transition altitude. Is there a transition level? No. So, so, there's no transition level. I'm going to assume that it's the same as the transition altitude. And that's going to be 11,000 feet. And then I need to look at the approach plate. Actually, I don't have the approach plate, so I need um, WSSS 02 center approach plate. Here we are. Let's aerodrome. Yeah, 
Okay, here we go. Zero to left. We're coming in zero to center. So our our initial approach fix is going to be at Lelon at twenty five hundred, or we can take it from Letna. Sorry, I can't see you guys right now. Let's see. Uh, so our descent minimums. We are class Charlie. Visual is 800 meters. Fuck. It's 2400. All right, let's look at our progress page. 113, we need to start descent. Where are we descending to? We're descending to 6,000 for Remis. Let's get ourselves down. Landing elevation is completed. One thing I do want to do real quick is get our winds. Descent wind. Okay, arrivals, performance approach, winds, outset and push. We won't need the speed break. Altimeter we will set at 11,000 feet. Lights will come on between 10,000 and 12,000. And deconstraints can go ahead and come on. Now would be a good time to wrap up any business you need to take care of as we prepare for approach. If you are up, once you return to your seat, we ask that you remain seated until your aircraft arrives safe to navigate. Flight attendants, please prepare the cabin for arrival. All right, we are not that far away, folks. We're about 130 miles or so. I'm going to go ahead and zoom us in a bit. So our landing system we will turn on when we get just a little bit closer. Don't want to do it 100 miles out. We're definitely not picking up our ILS at that range. So guys, if you want to pay, if you want to uh, participate in the landing rate prediction, just type exclamation point predict. After that, you will need to type a space and a negative number. It is telling you the rate at which I am hitting the ground. So when I hit the ground, am I moving down? That's why it's negative. Down 120 knots. Am I coming down 350 knots? Uh, just to give you an idea, my last couple landings. Uh, we're negative 351, negative 208, negative 300, negative 132, negative 249, negative 420, negative 222, and negative 182. Uh, a perfect landing is basically anything up to about 200, maybe 220. Uh, then you have firm would be anywhere from that to about mm, 325, 350. Uh, anything above that is hard, and then anything above like 400 is concerning, and you will hear people scream. I'm not joking, you will hear people scream. <laughs> Go ahead and dial this in a little bit more so we can see party a little better. Uh, I haven't seen any clouds in a while, so I'm going to go ahead and turn off our anti-ice. Because there is definitely no ice detected. We're just in an open descent. Nice and casual. <coughs> Pardon me. You can also, if you are into flight sim as well, you can type exclamation point route to get our routing. So if you either want to uh, fly with us or uh, follow our descent, you can go ahead and grab that route and just find us. Uh, you can probably find us on Sim Toolkit Pro.
All right, so we don't have anything immediate we need to do. We're actually doing pretty well. I'm gonna go ahead and take us off of the status page. Two degrees of vibration is not terrible. We're in positive air uh, air temperature at 27,000 feet. That's fantastic. Man, the weather here is beautiful. But yeah. Um, so if there's any flights that you want to see me do, pop in the Discord. I have a channel just for flight suggestions. Um, I absolutely want to see your suggestions. I do want to fly them for you. Um, it's not a first come first serve basis. Uh, you can use the. I've linked a few tools there to use, like Flight Connections and Flight Aware, just to just to see the ranges that you're looking at. Um, <clears throat> because short of like having a subathon or something like that, I'm not going to do something like Denver to Hawaii or something. That's like a 12 hour flight. I'm not doing that. I'm sorry. I'm not. Um, I like to keep it somewhere in the hour and a half ish range. Maybe I'll stretch up to like two and a half hour. Um, <clears throat> I have no problem doing that. Quite happy to. Here, well, there's a network error. Fantastic. See, that is interesting. I know some of you are watching, and I'm still only getting one viewer. Hey, Twitch, go fuck yourself. How about that? Twitch, you want to go fuck yourself? Um, man, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to look into maybe getting getting myself somewhere else. That is something that I have been trying to do. Um, I want to start streaming on Rumble. Because YouTube sets impossible goals where I'm already monetized on Rumble. I just need to have a high enough concurrent um, subscriber total to be able to live stream. I want to be able to stream on Rumble because, I'm going to be honest, Twitch is screwing everybody. And I'm tired of it. And I, I want to support a different platform. I want to I want to take my toys and go to a different playground. Um, that's what I want to do. And I know that's not particularly smart. I know that uh, I've spent a lot of time and effort building this platform. But um, and no, maybe I'll multi-stream. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'll surrender my, my affiliate status and multi-stream. That's something I could do. I could absolutely do that. Um, but in order to do that, I need more subscribers on Rumble. Um, so if you're watching, please go support me on Rumble. You can just search for Iraq Attack. I'm Iraq ATK. Um, I'm trying to make that everywhere. Can't do it on Twitter. Tried. Somebody else has it. I don't know why. Um, but everywhere else, I think I'm a rack ATK. Um, I think I'm a rack attack one on Twitter. Like a rack attack spelled out. Um, because I was already in a rack ATK on Twitter. Which I don't really care about Twitter that much anyway, so it is what it is. Descending through 19,000 feet, we're down. Um, we're going to be down until 11,000 before we go and change our altimeter. Uh, we've got plenty of space. Let's look here. So we need to hit reams at 6,000 feet. We are 50 miles away. And if we look at our calculator. 37 miles of uh, rise of a run. So we're doing good. For once, I am ahead of the descent path. That's beautiful. 
Normally, lately, I've been behind the aircraft on everything because I'm not used to streaming while trying to do the flight anymore. Um, because once I got... I, okay, I want to I point this out. I'm going to try and do this without disconnecting my autopilot. I was gifted this beautiful, magnificent bastard. This is the Thrustmaster TCA... Um, uh, I got the captain pack. That is the stick. I can't quite do the same thing with the throttle without disconnecting it. I'm not doing that mid-flight. But I got that too. Um, with the flap selectors, with the speed brake selectors, gear controls, auto brakes, parking brakes, rudder deflection. This is the whole kit. It costs $270. I got gifted this. By a friend. I And I had no idea it was coming. Just, I, I got a notification that there was a box at the door. And I go and I check and there's a box at the door. I'm like, it's addressed to me. Why is it addressed to me? I haven't ordered anything. Get it inside, pull it open. There's a flight stick and hold this, this is the, this is the throttle and stick I've been, I've been aiming to get for years. Since it came out. Since I first heard that this thing existed, I've wanted it. Now, I have my complaints. Like, there's no reason that the the locking pull on the uh, on the flap selector doesn't work. It's just a it, it's just a one single piece of plastic where in the real thing you have to pull the detent up so that you can move the selector lever. And uh, the speed brake lever is just a lever that comes down. Uh, in the real one, it doesn't just come down. When it's at fully up, you can pull it out. And that arms the automatic speed brakes. Those are some, you know, minor, minor grumps. I can be a little grumpy sometimes. That's okay. All right, so we are coming through 12,000 feet. Let's go ahead and turn on our landing lights. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you fine folks to get your butts back in your seats. I want butts in seats, butts in seats. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on our landing system. I know we're not gonna get anything out here, but I'm gonna turn it on anyway, so that once, it's, uh, once we're in range, we will see our glide slope and localizer. 11,000 feet, we're gonna go ahead and set our altimeters to 1009. Speed is in managed mode, speed brakes are not required. We're gonna hit uh, flaps one at 230 knots. You actually see we have a reference right here. Flaps one is 230 knots. Flaps 2 is at 200 knots, 3 is at 185, and full is at 177. But I summarized that on my checklist by saying VFE. V flaps extension next. Because I have the reference right here, I don't need to put it in my speed in, in, in my checklist. So we are down to about 250 knots because we are under 10,000 feet, or we're about to be. And that's pretty much a global standard that under twenty five or under ten thousand feet speed limit of two hundred fifty knots. Unless you're an ultralight, then you have very few rules whatsoever. But you probably aren't flying two hundred and fifty knots in an ultralight. But if you did manage it, that would be interesting. And I think legal. I'm not sure. Finishing a little bit of my strawberry lemonade. All right, we are on approach, folks. Dial this in a little bit. We want to see 6,000 feet and 220 knots at reams, which means we are going to be at flaps one by that point.
You're not going to be above the glide slope. I am bound and determined. I am not going to be above the glide slope today. We are going to fly this goddamn approach, and we are going to nail it. It's promise. I don't know if we're going to nail it on the runway or in a coffin, but we're going to nail it. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly, I'm fairly confident. I'd say, I'd say, I'd say about 40% confident. 20% hubris. 40% we're going to die. <laughs> We've still got quite a ways to go before I have to worry about anything. Um, I'm just trying to stay ahead of the checklist. I go ahead and arm the speed brakes. There's no reason not to. One thing I'm not going to go ahead and do is arm the auto brakes because there's been a glitch going on with this aircraft that if you pan those buttons off screen at any time for any reason, it disconnects the uh, auto brake. I, I don't know why. I, I could not begin to tell you. Um, it may just be something with me. But it's, it's too reliable. Right? I mean, look at this. Look at this. I'm going to turn my, my brake low on. That's on my controls here. You can see this light right over here. Indicating the auto brake is on low. You can see here on the enunciator. Auto brake low. Right? But then if I pan that off. It disconnects. If I pan back on. It comes back on. Right here right here. Pan it off, disconnect. Pan it on, reconnect. Pan it off, disconnect. Pan it on, reconnect. I cannot explain. I could I could say, I, I could make the inference. If it wasn't coming back on when I pan it back over, I could make the inference that maybe there is something in my setup that is sending a command. Or that maybe there's a setting with my right click that's arming and disarming my auto brake. Speed check flaps one. But I'm not seeing that. All right, so our next is going to be 4,000 feet at Samco. See, now it, now it won't even come back on. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. Never mind. It's still doing the thing. I think it has to do with the way that if you watch this, when it, when it pans on, it doesn't immediately light up. It, it warms in. And I think it has something to do with that. But I'm not entirely sure. Okay, we are still not tuned. That is that is a little troubling. Okay, once we cross here, we're going to come down to 4,000 feet. I don't want to break the constraint, which... I'm not going to. The, the plane does hold itself. It won't descend until we cross that, that waypoint. But I'd rather not give it instructions that it can't follow. Alright, and we just crossed reams, so let's drop down to 4,000 feet. about 40-ish miles away. Track miles, anyway. I'm not getting the landing system, which is fine. I don't think we should pick it up until about 25 nautical miles. Uh, uh, uh. 
See, it's so finicky. I, literally, if I if I pan that off, any one of those buttons, it goes away. Because that auto brake max button went off screen, it went away. It's so weird. Anyway. So we're still descending. Uh, we're going to hit 2,000 feet. Or 4,000 feet. I'm sorry. Uh, it's been a day, folks. It's been a day. Okay, so we've hit 4,000. I'm going to take her down to... No, 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 no. We're going to hit this D-cell here in a second. I'm going to make sure that my FM, that my uh, mic 2 is on because I'm going to need to do a direct to to Leelon after Samco. So I think once we hit this D-cell, I'm going to go ahead and arm the approach mode. No. I'm going to go ahead and wait a little bit. Aha! Here we go. Here we go. That's, that's starting to come in. See, this was actually from an, a level in Sonic the Hedgehog 2 where you were flying a plane. And so that's ironic to have that show up now. This may be our... I don't know. Okay, speed check. Flaps 2. And flaps three, flaps full. I really didn't particularly need to, to slow down this fast, but I am. What are you gonna do about it? Look why. All right, so we're gonna be, we're gonna be doing a direct to Lelan. Not quite ready to do it yet. There we've got our glide slope. We are under it. Thank you. I told you we'd be under it. <laughs> All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we're on our way in. Go ahead and have the flight attendant secure the cabin. and direct level in now. Let's go ahead and activate approach mode. EP1 and 2. And I descend to 2,500 feet. We are prepared to do a Cat 3 duel. We are not doing a Cat 3 duel unless we absolutely have to, which I don't see how that would happen because I can already see the island. Let's 
Go ahead and light this bitch up because I don't want to have to look back up here. Now remember we are coming in 0 2 center. Looks like we got a little bit of gustiness. Okay, it's not this island that we're coming into, it's this one. So there might be a call for a Cat 3 landing, but I don't think we're going to do that. I think if I have to risk killing all these passengers to uh, land the aircraft, we're going to do that. There's a reason why I'm not a professional pilot. 2,500. 2,500 feet. I'm going to go ahead and break through this cloud here. And then we should be able to see... 100 above. The airport from there. Folks, hundred above two thousand five hundred. Watch this localizer come in. And as soon as we start our actual descent on final, above. I'm going to go ahead and drop our gear. I will turn you off, GPWS. Hundred above. See our glide slope starting to come in. I should have taken a break and oh, moved around a little bit today. Hundred above. I think we're right here. Is where we're coming in. Hundred above. Two thousand five hundred. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut you. <laughs> Localizer is captured. Our lateral navigation is stabilized. Hundred above, two thousand five hundred. Okay, we've started our descent. I'm going to go ahead and drop the gear. Minimum go around altitude to three thousand. I have the runway. Go ahead and call the purser. Secure the uh, secure the cabin. All right, I'm going to go ahead and cancel. No, nope. there we go. Disconnect. There we go. Go ahead and switch this over to landing system.
We need to be ready to hit reversers once our plane lands. Got a straight headwind. This is beautiful for a landing. Let's go ahead and bank right just a little. All right, let's pull the nose up. Slower descent. One thousand. Keep that glide slope. And a little bit left. Getting a little low. Bring it up. Keep it stable. Come on. Come on. Five hundred. Four hundred. All right, now I'm just looking at the runway now. Three hundred. 200. A low. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. Five. Oh, come on! Five. Shit. Versers. Eighty knots, still reversers. Manual brake. All right. Go ahead and clean up our flaps. Speed brake. Turn on our APU. What are you doing? Playing? No, we don't stop on the runway. Vacated the runway. So I'm just going through my flows while also trying to navigate. Ah. All right, let's look real quick at our wheels. That's our doors. Use some fans. straight in right here.
Come on. Keep rolling. Keep rolling. Keep rolling. Go ahead and turn off our taxi light. I think we're probably going to be right about here. Let's take a look outside because we don't have a marshaller. We would normally have a marshaller or auto gate. And since we don't have either... Oh, this is such a nightmare. Pretty close. All right, let's get back to the cockpit. All right, let's see. Landing lights are retracted, ground spoilers are disarmed, engine mode is in normal, flaps are retracted, APU master is on, APU start is on, terrain is off, uh, brake temp has been checked, brake fan is on. Let's go through the parking checklist. Parking brake pressure is green. We're going to go ahead and turn on our parking brakes. Anti-ice is off, APU bleed can come on, engine 1 and 2 master can come off. Runway turnoff lights are off. Wing lights can come off. Beacon lights can come off. Seat belts can come off. Elapsed time can stop. Then let's start deboarding the aircraft. We're going to do basically the same thing that we did before, except we're going to come in here and we're going to manually enter zero passengers. And that's going to realize that we want to deboard, so we're going to go ahead and real time deboard the plane. See all these gray things? This, these are people that need to not be in their seats. And the fact that they are still dark gray means that there are butts in these seats. And we need to get them off. So, folks, let's get them off. Let's call the ground power unit. Let's call the baggage truck. Let's call the jet bridge. Let's call the fuel truck. No, we don't need a fuel truck. What am I talking about? Iraq, what are you smoking? Oh, this jet bridge is going to come all the way from over there from downtown. Folks, look at this. You are getting jet bridge service from all the way over there. It's going to take them about six hours to drive that jet bridge over here. It only took us about an hour and a half to get here. And uh, then it looks like they're going to try to connect it directly to the cockpit. Realize they've made a mistake and they're going to come over to where the door is. And they're going to hook that bad boy up and get you off of this plane. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Singapore. Daytime landing. Terrible daytime landing. What do we, what do we get? Minus 268. That's not actually that bad. That's just a firm landing. Looks like nobody, uh, nobody entered the prediction, so nobody gets it. We did hit at 1.3 G's. I am so sorry. That is uh, that is bad. That is what is called bad. Uh, however, I had zero degrees bank. My wings were level. I had four degrees upward pitch. I should have had probably somewhere like five, I think, three to five. So I'm, I'm in the sweet spot. Wind speed was seven knots from directly in front of me, so that was good. Um, yeah, it looks like, uh, looks like I just screwed up. And that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. All right, so we're going to deboard the plane. Let's take a look at these butts in these seats. Um, they're they're not they're not getting off the plane. Um, and I'm not. Oh, yes, they are. There it goes. There we are. Butts are getting out of seats. They're deboarding from the back, which is stupid. They should have done it from the front. That's how they usually do it. Um, if you are listening, fly-by-wire team, uh, that's something I would change normally whenever I fly at least. Um, I'm not a real pilot, but I have been a real passenger, and they generally deboard the plane from the front. Uh, unless they have a aft um, jet bridge or a uh, aft staircase to get off the plane. Um, but in this case, we are deboarding from this door, so... It should be this zone first. Uh, essentially, the guys in the back are first in, last out. Sorry. But that's beside the point. Uh, we are here in Singapore. We are deboarding the plane. It's probably going to take us two or three minutes. It's not going to be that big a deal. Let's go ahead and keep doing our parking workflow. So engines are off. AP bleed is on. 
Um, yeah. Runway turnoffs are off. Wing lights are off. Nav uh, nose wheel is off. Beacon is off. Seat belts are off. Elapsed time is stopped. Fuel pumps can all come off. Boop, 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 boop. Uh, transponder can come off. And then our brake fan, unless we're going to do a second sector, which I'm not going to do today. Uh, we can go ahead and take off these brake fans. Our wheels are... That's doors. Rack. Our wheels are still quite hot. 135 to 145 degrees. That's nice and spicy. Let's go ahead and return this to arc mode. I'm going to go ahead and turn off our adhers while we're waiting for people to get butts out of seats. These can all go off at the same time. They just can't come on at the same time. Or rather, they should. So since we have external power, we're going to go ahead and connect that. We're going to disconnect our APU bleed. We're going to turn off our APU master. I'm um, going to go ahead and leave the nav and logo and strobe on so that we look good as everybody's deboarding the aircraft. Um, so APU master is off. APU bleed is off. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the emergency exit lights and the no smoking signs. So now we're just waiting for everybody to get the hell off the plane. And it looks like it's going to take a little bit, but um, that's it. That's how we fly from Jakarta to, where the hell are we, Singapore. It is a balmy 26 degrees. And um, I think it's going to be a little, little, little bit warm. A little bit warm. Uh, I think you'll like it. But uh, hey, who am I? So thank you guys for flying with. For those of you that have been watching this on YouTube, thank you so much. YouTube, Rumble, whatever. Uh, you know. I I, I, I gotta say, not a big fan of YouTube, um, but all of you that come from YouTube, I love you, honestly. Uh, those of you who are new on Rumble, thank you so much. Hit the, hit the Rumble button and subscribe. Do the same thing over on YouTube. Hit the like button, subscribe, comment below if there's some place you want to see me fly. Um, if you thought I'm an absolute nut bar for flying the way that I do or landing the way that I did, Please let me know. If you're a real airline pilot and I'm doing something wrong, please, 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 please tell me. I am the humblest person when it comes to this. I do not know what I'm doing. I I have a good idea and that's about it. So I take any criticism, any comments, any critique. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for spending your valuable time watching my flight. And I hope you've enjoyed it. Have a wonderful night.